My name is Eric and this happened to me when I was around seven or eight years old. One summer, my dad took me to a campsite for a long weekend. When we arrived, there were some kids around my age playing in a small park. I looked at my dad and he said, go ahead. So my dad unpacked the car and I went to maybe make some friends. There were two boys in a small park. I said hello and they said hello back. Their names were Kevin and Graham. Graham had to go shortly after because his parents were calling for him. So Kevin and I hung around and we talked about things we liked and how long we were staying at the campsite. After about an hour, Kevin's mom was calling for him. So we had to leave. I was about to head back to my dad when a boy appeared from the woods. He said, hello. I said, hi back. He introduced himself as Daniel. He seemed like a nice kid and we got along pretty well. He asked me if I wanted to play hide and seek, so I said yes. We played hide and seek at the campsite for maybe 45 minutes until I told him I had to go, so I went back to my dad and went to the camper. I told my dad I had made some friends and my dad asked where their campers were. I told him where Kevin and Graham's were, but I never asked where Daniel was. I thought maybe, well, I'll see him the next day and I'll ask him then. So the next day I went outside to see if any of the kids wanted to play. Kevin and Graham were both unavailable. I was about to just return back to my camp room when Daniel appeared out of nowhere, out the woods. We greeted each other and I asked him if he wanted to play hide and seek again. He said, yeah, but he said we should play at his house. I asked him where his house was. And he told me it's not far. It's just through the woods. I followed Daniel in the woods toward his house. We were walking for ages and one thing that I found unusual was the more we walked, the less talkative and distant Daniel became. Eventually we exited the woods and Daniel said, here we are. He pointed at a rundown old house with a white van parked beside it. He started walking toward it. I slowly followed and asked Daniel, so this is your house? He replied by saying, yeah, let's go play hide and seek. I got this bad feeling. It became worse the closer we got to the house. It didn't look like a normal house. I started to notice that there were people standing by the windows inside the house. I asked Daniel if that was his dad in the window. And he said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't worry about him. He's harmless. And just continued walking. I don't know what it was, but something made me slow down. Daniel was by the front door at this point. And when he turned around, asked me if I was coming. I told him I had to go. I turned around and ran through the forest and back to my camper. I spent the next few hours watching TV. Then I got bored and decided to go back outside. I knocked on Graham's door, but he wasn't available. I knocked on Kevin's door and his dad told me he was already out with some boy named Daniel. So I went back to the camper and did something else with my time. Late that night, there was a knock on our door. It was Kevin's parents. They asked us if we had seen Kevin anywhere, as he's been gone for hours. I asked his mom if she had checked Daniel's house, and she said no because she didn't know where Daniel lived. I showed Kevin's parents along with my dad and a few other people through the woods to Daniel's house. When we got there, the van was gone. And when we knocked on the door, there was no answer and the whole house was empty and abandoned. We didn't find Kevin for the rest of our time at the campsite, and he's still missing to this day as far as I know. I thought then, and still think today, that Daniel was some kind of bait to lure kids in the same age as him to be kidnapped. And I'm thankful my gut sensed danger and told me to leave.